Today we are putting the BQ Panda Jet through its paces to see if it will actually improve the performance of your X1 or P1S printers from Bamboo Lab. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do another in the upgrade series and today we're going to take a look at the Panda Jet from uh, Bichu. So again, they sent this to me uh, to get my thoughts on this and what it is, is here we have the cover for my P1S uh, for the hot end and you've got these little duct here, this system, uh, so the fan pulls in from the front and then it's got two ports here on either side of the nozzle. One of them is pretty much directly lined up with the side of the nozzle here, the other one is a little bit offset. So the Panda Jet is designed to replace that part and we're going to go through the installation here shortly um, but first we'll do a little unboxing so this is the box so inside the box we have a couple of things first off you get the nice little duck so add that to my collection um, and then we have the uh, jet system here this is a 3d printed part that they have uh, done a really nice job on and so one of the first dif differences you can see here is it's got four ports. We'll get into that a little later. Um, but continuing with the unboxing, you've got the uh, a little QR code um, in here, or excuse me, this is the correct QR code. Um, this will take you to the uh, BTT or Big Tree Tech Wiki, and it'll give you the installation instructions. You've got a couple little other items in here. You've got a uh, B or BQ sticker, however that's pronounced, and then you've got the Allen wrench that you'll need for the uh, installation. So back to the jet, you've got instead of having these two little ports here that are on the side, what you'll end up with with this improved version is you've got four jets that are going to direct uh, the airflow directly to the nozzle, and then it also has these magnets already installed. So we'll take a closer look at this as I shift over the camera uh, for the installation. All right, let's take a look at the uh, installation here. It's uh, quite simple. We're simply going to remove a couple of screws here, um, and then uh, we should be able to pop this part out and then install the new one. So now I have taken this apart before. Yours may have a tiny little bit of glue. Um, I had a uh, little bit of a problem at one point with a well, I don't even remember what caused it, but you know, it was one of those things where you come back to your printer and you see that there's just a massive blob of uh, um, filament. Nope, oh, there's actually a couple. I may have just undone the wrong screws. So let's learn from my mistakes. It's always good to, I probably should have looked at the wiki. Uh, one more time before doing this. So this screw here and then this screw here are the ones that actually hold it on to the housing, not the ones that hold the uh, piece together. So let's get those couple of screws out and then this whole piece comes out and this detaches Da, 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 da. I think it's kind of stuck under. There we go. So there you can see, uh, again, took out a little more than I needed to, but we've got this piece, which I had to have mentioned before, completely dismantle so that I could get uh, the filament blobs out of there. But that's the way that this part goes together. So since we have it apart, we can see that we've got these two channels um, that our airflow ends up coming in. So the fan mouth sits right here and then it blows down. You can kind of see those two holes there at the bottom. So we get air from here and here. Now, I'll get that one out of the way. We'll save a couple of our screws here. Two of those go back to you. And then we have the new mount and that's gonna fit right in here and we're gonna oh there's a little 
spot right there that needs to uh, fit in for this to mount properly. So we'll get that all lined up just like so. And then we just replace our two screws. So one there. So this is a very quick installation. It'll take even less time than it took me if you don't remove unnecessary screws. We'll grab this little guy. This is going to go right here on the side. That magnet makes it a little bit more challenging. Let's pick that up, put it back where it belongs. And that screw go in there. I'm trying to watch the camera so that you can see what I'm doing here. I always tend to get my hands in front of the camera. Apologize for that. So there you go. Maybe if I go this way, now you can kind of sort of see that's where that is. So there we go. Now we have that fully installed. We can put this back in the printer uh, and see how it performs. Well, we now have several days worth of printing done. Uh, several days just because I don't have all that much free time. Uh, not that it takes this much time to print these, but uh, the results are in and they're very interesting. Let me tell you that. So let's get into the details a little more closely. So one thing I want to make very clear in this video is that sometimes I make mistakes. All of these other parts here that you see, and I actually was just about ready to complete this video, these kind of star looking things over here on the left, and these other overhang tests over here on the right. As I was finishing up the video, I realized that the settings that I used to print those all had my fan speed maxed out, the part fan speed maxed out at about 40%. Well, for the Panda Jet, you actually need to put air through the jet for it to do anything. So once I realized this, I reran the test uh, using these overhang uh, parts here, and I made sure to mark down all of the settings here. So we have these overhang tests, and I did two with the Panda Jet and two with the stock fan. I actually had to remove the Panda Jet and put the stock fan back on to redo my tests. Um, but I did two settings. I did one kind of like I was doing before, where it was pretty much my production settings and the settings that I use for this particular filament when I'm making my parts for my 3D printing business. But then I tweaked the settings to do a second run to make sure that it had the best possible settings for cooling and overhangs. So I went in and I made sure that the max available to the part fan was 100% and the settings were adjusted so that as the overhang increased, the fan would increase. And then I also turned on the auxiliary fan, which helps in overhangs as well. And now we'll take a closer look at what we ended up with. Okay, first off, we'll take a look at this part. This was printed with the stock uh, cooler, or, and it is uh, max 40% part fan, 0% auxiliary. So if I turn this over and you can kind of get a look at some of these overhangs, um, you'll see as we get here toward uh, the top or the underside, um, they're not great, but uh, that's kind of what you would what you would expect. Actually, let me set it down this way. I'm going to take this guy off and we'll just sort of spin this around so that you can see what we have here. Um, the results that we got there. Now we'll take a look at what we got with the Panda Jet. Again, same settings. And in this one, it actually looks uh, worse, I would say, but again, we're only we're we're limiting the performance of this part by, or I was I was limiting the performance of this part by not allowing uh, maximum airflow to flow through it at the overhang. So that was my mistake. So now let's take a look at um, 
the stock fan, when we increased our settings to allow more air uh, to flow to the park cooling fan. So again, you can see it's much, much improved just by making those small changes in the setting. So you definitely do need to tweak your machine if you uh, have a part where you're doing a lot of overhangs. And then finally, we'll take a look at the Panda Jet once we allowed 100% part cooling. Um, and in this case, the Panda Jet did much better than it did before when I was limiting it. And I would say it is really hard uh, to tell, but it may just have the slightest advantage uh, in a couple spots between the stock fan. Um, let me pull this one back over and kind of put them side to side so you can see. Um, but honestly, you're, you're a little bit hard pressed to tell a massive difference. So there may be a slight improvement in the performance with the Panda Jet, uh, but it's not, it's nothing that is, uh, you know, absolutely night and day uh, like the case was when with their, uh, the Panda Lux Lite that I recently reviewed where it is just literally a night and day difference between the two. So there you have a fine look at the performance between the two. Again, on the right hand side, you have the stock. On the left hand side, uh, you have the Panda Jet. All right, so there you have it. Um, that kind of wraps up the review of the Panda Jet from uh, Bichu. So, um, you know, upgrade path, uh, we're talking about upgrades here. So this is a, a this is a, I, I don't even know that I'd say tough. If I, you know, regular review, I'd probably give this three stars. It's not a bad product, but it's also not something that's just going to blow your socks off and blow you out of the water and be like, you know, I can't, I don't know what I ever did um, without this. Like I said, um, you know, just in, in looking at, at these two parts here, um, I, I do give the edge to the BQ uh, or to the Panda Jet. It is a slight um, improvement. It's not crazy expensive. Uh, I think it's about $20. So, um, you know, if you really, really need uh, to fine tune or, you know, get the max performance, it may be something that you want to invest in. Uh, but again, it's not going to make or break you as far as the ability to print 3D overhangs. Now, one thing I will note um, that uh, as great as this design is, uh, one of the, the problems that I see that you could face um, now with the original, uh, you know, fan shroud or jet, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you remember in the beginning when I had, I mentioned that I had a, uh, a blob uh, situation. That one, because it's in two pieces, I was able to, you know, split the two pieces and get the... Um, the you know molten um, filament out of there with this one since it's it's one piece that's formed if you were to clog up these little holes um, you'd have to replace it there's really not going to be a way to get those out of there so that's just one thing uh, to consider um, so again not a bad product but uh, three out of five stars so that's it for this review uh, it's taken me probably longer than many of the reviews I've had because I had to go back and redo some things um, but that's how we you know that's how we figure things out so as always I, I appreciate you taking your time here if you like what we're doing on the channel please take a moment uh, to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you know that when I drop new content um, I've got plenty more things uh, in store for you all I have been contacted by a few other people and uh, we've got some fun projects in the works. So I am looking forward to the channel continuing to grow and spending time with all of you. So as always, let's just keep on learning, burning, and printing together. Take care, everyone.